In this video, we're going to tackle linear equations in grade 10. Now guys, linear equations are really nice and easy for you guys because of the fact that they have a degree of 1. So you may ask yourself the question now, what exactly is the degree of an equation? What does that mean? Well, the degree simply refers to the highest exponent or power in an equation. All right, so the highest exponent in an equation or an expression. But most importantly, this is the highest exponent on the variable. So it has to be on the variable for it to make sense. In an example then, if I gave you something like x cubed minus 3x squared plus 2x equals 0, you can clearly see that the highest exponent on the variable x is that 3 over there. So that would mean that for this equation here, the degree is 3. And so when dealing with linear equations, we know that the exponents on the x for a linear equation, the highest exponent will be 1. And that makes it quite nice for us because when we've got a degree of 1, it means that we can only have one solution to the equation. So there's only one answer, unlike when we deal with a quadratic equation where we've got two answers. Or in this case, where we have a cubic equation with a degree of 3, we would have three solutions. Now, we've been doing these linear equations since back in grade 8 and 9, so you should be pretty familiar with them. So if I said to you then, how do you solve a linear equation, you'd probably tell me this. If I gave you the equation over here of x plus 5 equals 10, what you'd suggest to me is, well, I'm going to take this 5 over here and move it over, and so my answer would therefore be x is 10 minus 5, therefore x is 5. Now, technically speaking, you're not wrong. But when we get into more difficult kinds of equations, it becomes important for you to understand exactly what's going on when we solve a linear equation. And the method that we've been using up until this point to solve linear equations and what you're going to continue to do is in fact called an additive inverse. Sounds very complicated, but you don't have to worry too much about it. All it means is that if I give you one of the four basic operations, which is plus, minus, times, and divide, in order to solve an equation, you would simply use the opposite, which would be minus, plus, divide, and times. So if I give you an equation with one of these operations, you would use the opposite operation. And we use these opposite operations in order to isolate the variable. Again, we're using very technical mathematical terms here, but the word isolate just means we want to get x by itself. So we use these operations over here in order to get x by itself. But in truth, we are not moving the 5 over in this original equation here. We were doing something slightly different. So let me show you exactly what we were doing and how you need to start viewing equations going forward. So we look at this equation. We've got x plus 5 equals 10. So we've got a plus here. The opposite operation is a minus. And what we do on one side of an equation, we do on the other. So we would go x plus 5, then use our opposite operation, which would be minus 5, equals 10 minus 5. So you can see clearly that I've done this operation on both sides 
of the equation. Now the net result of this bit over here is plus, my, plus 5 minus 5, which gives us 0. So we can just write that out then as x equals 5. You may be asking yourself, but this over here is the exact same thing as if I just moved that 5 over. And while that's true, and the idea of moving a number over the equal sign and then changing the sign still works, what I need you guys to see from now on out is that you actually weren't doing that. Instead, you were using this idea of an additive inverse and then either adding or subtracting or doing something to both sides of the equation. So think of it like this, almost as if in an equation you view the left-hand side and the right-hand side separately and do whatever operation is necessary. Now the reason I'm teaching it to you like this is because it becomes very important when we start dealing with questions that have fractions in them, as well as when you get to grade 11 and 12, it's very important that you have a solid idea that when we're dealing with an equation, we're viewing the two sides separately, and then we're performing operations on both sides of the equation to isolate variables. So even though it looks as though I'm simply moving that 5 over, that's not what I'm doing. I'm actually minusing 5 from both sides. Same as if I gave you something like 2x is equal to 10, I'm not moving the 2 over. Instead, I'm dividing both sides of the equation by 2, then the 2's there would cancel, and I would be left with x is equal to 5. So guys, make sure you're starting to understand how we view equations where it's not moving stuff over, it's dealing with the sides individually. Now that we've sort of understood that, if you're still a little bit confused as to what I'm getting at here, feel free to send me an email, or alternatively, go and have a look in your textbook in the beginning section dealing with these linear equations and see exactly what it says there, because it summarizes it very nicely. And again, it's quite difficult to get the idea across in such a short amount of time in a video. So now that we've done that, let's look at a few examples where we would use linear equations. All right, so here's the first example we're gonna look at, and it is quite a challenging one, so just relax. Maybe take a minute to try it out for yourself and see if you can get the answer, but let's work through it together. So, we've got five into x plus one is equal to three multiplied by three x plus two minus 4. So, what sort of steps would we be following in order to answer this? I hope you can sort of see that the first thing that we want to do is basically get rid of these brackets. So, in order to do that, I would distribute those numbers in. So, let's do that. Watch my notation. I put the therefore sign. So, it's going to become 5x plus 5 is equal to 3 times 3, which is 9x, and 3 times 2 is 6. Make sure that when you've got questions like this, you watch the sign inside the bracket, as well as the sign in front of the number outside, minus 4. Now we can go ahead and group our like terms. So remember I said to you, we're not going to move the 5 over, instead we are subtracting 5 from both sides. When we do that though, I'm not going to write it out on this side, so I'm going to move it over like you normally would, but I just want that understanding to be a little bit different. So we would get 5x is equal to 9x, and then 6 minus 4 is 2, so it's going to be plus 2, and there's the minus 5 that I subtracted from both sides. 
Then we can deal with the x's now. So there we've got a 5x and a 9x. So what I'm going to do is subtract 9x from both sides. So basically what I'm doing is, in inverted commas here, I'm moving that 9x over, but not really. And we would get 5x minus 9x, which is minus 4x, is equal to 2 minus 5, which is minus 3. Then we're going to go ahead and divide both sides by minus 4, because I want to get this x here by itself. And that would leave us with x is equal to, we've got 3 over 4, and those negatives over there will cancel. So our final answer is x is equal to 3 over 4.